So now that we have finished our logo designs and we have them in various ways, we've printed them for our critique um, and you have uploaded vector files either as SVG files or as EPS files to Dropbox. I wanted to go over kind of how they're going to get used and how we can uh, finish them off and before delivering them to the client. So under the proving ground, it's a little complicated. Under proving ground number two is where you submitted your, your initial sketches, your exploratory sketches, right? Some of you went ahead and updated that with your finished logos. That's great, but not necessary. When you go to the next and you actually see assignment four, that is where you put your refined sketch, your black shape logo, and your colored version of the logo. So in order for me to able, be able to give you full credit for that, you need to put those into the assignment four folder as well. Some of you have them in the proving ground, but don't have them in the final assignment. And I know you've done the work. All right. And remember, any time you submit something that's missing a component, like missing a colored version, as long as you got something in by the deadline, you can always resubmit for a fuller grade. So these logos look really great. Now, how do they get used? So you did your sketches. This is the, the slideshow I'm presenting to the art committee that will approve the mural. And it's kind of sponsoring the project, right? So all of your sketches informed your final logos. Here they are in all their glory. These are just raster versions of them. And so then I just took those raster versions and in Photoshop worked up kind of a tiled pattern that worked for them. And this tile pattern will get used as kind of a wallpaper repeating texture because I like these, these campus murals that can be like 10 feet uh, long and wide for there to be a, a separate read from a distance than there is from up close, right? So when we combine these as an iterative pattern, what they will contribute to is this full design and it will kind of fill up the space and then individual vector logos will get brought up and made bigger throughout the design as well. So there's a lot of depth. So obviously this is lacking color, this is lacking texture, but this is the separation of the space for the wall that's given to us. All right. Now, in order for them to be useful, they need to be EPS files and they need to not have any white in them, right? And for the most part, we're there. I'm going to show you a few things. So if you, before you ever deliver a vector, whether it's a logo, whether it's a t-shirt design, whether it's a type design, we're going to be doing all of that, uh, whether it's line art for spot illustration, you want to check it within Illustrator. And unfortunately, the vector.com online free tool doesn't allow you to save as an EPS. So it's always good to be able to save it as both an SVG and a, an EPS. So here's the first thing you check. You open it up in Illustrator, you select the whole thing with the large selection tool, and then drag it off of the artboard until it's on the gray. And that's to make sure that there's no white in it, right? And then if there is white in it, it's v simply a matter of understanding those vector elements like this and getting rid of the white. So first I can turn it off and then I can just delete it. Same thing with the others. Now there's a few options to get rid of this white. So hi, do you want those to be filled in with black or do you want it to be one full outline? So if we fill all the whites with black, that's easily done in Illustrator, which is, you want to do all of that before you start um, outlining them, right? 
So we just select the whites and then we change that to a black, right? Select the white, change it to a black, just the fill color. Last one, select the white, fill it to a black. Oh, not the last one. <laughs> now what's interesting is in the little preview here, I know it's, it's small on this high def screen, but the whites are the only ones that appear empty. So you see that it will look like an empty box because it's just white on white. So it's, it's fairly easy to find those whites and then just convert them to black. So yeah, we can look at that. I think that looks pretty good. It, yeah, balances the other side. Great. So that's why you want to have full control of these things. The other thing you want to check is select the whole thing and make sure that there's no stroke, right? So how do you know if there's a stroke? Well, if you look at it and there's a line on the inside of the shape rather than on the outsides of the shapes, that means there is a stroke. Also, if it says question mark here, question mark here, and you've selected all of it, it means not all of it is, is one thing or the other, right? If it was all strokes, then the stroke would show there. If it was all fills, then fills would show there. We need it to all be fills, and that's actually easy to do. Once you've selected it all, there's a lot of strokes here. We need to go to Object, Path, Outline the Strokes. And when you do that, everything becomes a path. So you see how the lines are, are outlined and filled in. Now, the other thing that's nice to do, though not absolutely necessary, is to merge everything together. And this is kind of making a vector print ready or making it... Uh, client ready. So once everything is selected, we can also use the Pathfinder tool, which I have open here, but you can always find it under Window. And I'm going to use the Merge function, and that will blend everything together. And so now what was a very complicated project is now not that many shapes anymore, and looks very clean. And then now that everything is merged, it's pretty easy to use the tools we're, we're learning for line art to smooth between. For instance, I can get rid of this anchor point if I don't want that, that hook there, right? And it will smooth it. I can pull on the handles. and work on those transitions, right? I can do the same thing here. I can simply move this anchor point. Whoops. Gotta click off of it, click on it with the small selection tool, and then just move it up. Same thing with this one. Click off of it, click on it with the small selection tool. Move up. If you hold down Shift, it will lock it. Then on the inside here, how can I fix this? I can use the blob brush. We're gonna be learning about all of this with our, with our uh, vector line art. Now you can go in and we can really kind of clean up everything, but I think that's really, really strong for now. And so now we get the option of saving it as an EPS that's fully outlined. And that allows us to use it in a tile pattern, but also to use it at any size that's gonna fit for the project. That's the beauty of the vector. So then just for clarity's sake, I know that this no longer has any white in it, so I'm gonna drag it back onto the white and I'm going to save it as an EPS. And that's what will get used. Illustrator EPS, and that's going to go into my student EPS files folder. Say OK. And then that is what you would deliver to the client. And I can get rid of that SVG. Ah, this is another thing to check. If there's a lot of 
extra space in your EPS when you open it in preview, that means there's some like hidden paths somewhere in the file. Oh, and it's just because I have that turned on. So it's always good to kind of check that information. You don't want like a floating dot somewhere. Okay, the other one, was submitted as an EPS. But when I open it in Illustrator, and this is because it was created, very well created uh, using vector.com, I'm gonna select it all. And when I move it off, it's just still got some white, right? And it's still got some strokes. So we get to practice those things again. Some students think this way, well, instead of of trying to fix it within the vector, why don't I just take a PNG of it, you know, in Photoshop, and why don't I just open that in Illustrator? And this is like with your line art, making your line art into a vector. Why don't I move it off onto the gray so I can see the whites, right? And then just use the image trace function for a black and white logo, and then Click on the advanced options, just like we do when you scan line art, and then play with them. And then say, ignore the whites. And it will give me a logo. So I just want you to notice the difficulties, especially with logo design, of doing them from raster images is that it's not going to be nearly as uniform as it is when you control the vectors yourself. So I can do that, and then I can hit expand, and it turns it into vectors. And sure enough, there's no whites. But notice how the thicknesses, the spacing, is all kind of out of my control. Whereas when you're doing a logo and you want a perfect oval there, you want perfect spacing, Illustrator, building it from Illustrator is the way to go. So let's first deal with these lines. Actually, let's make everything um, a fill path first. So I'm going to select it all. You can do that pretty easily. And then you see the question marks here. So then I'm going to go up to Object. And I'm going to say Path, Outline All the Strokes. So to remind you, strokes, they output from a single path. Like each of these lines makes perfect sense the same way I would do it. You start with the pen tool, you make a curve. The problem is when you move that into Photoshop and you scale it as a vector, that stroke is going to be locked into the, the criteria you gave it, like one point, two point, whatever it is, and it will actually change on you. So before we move it into Photoshop, before we finalize it, we want to say object outline, object path outline the strokes. And that way, they will have a width to them. And we want that for all of them. So I want to make sure we get that. So now this has an inside and an outside. This has an inside and an outside. That has an inside and an outside. This has an inside and an outside. Which also allows you to do things like curve them if you want to. So there's, there's a lot of benefits to kind of finishing off this way. So for instance, if I wanted to curve this tip, I could use the corner tool and curve them. Noemi, do you want your tips curved or straight? All right, so we'll just push that curve. I really love this kind of corner tool and I used it a lot in my own logo. When you want something looking technical, but just a little bit more refined at the edges. Okay, now this shape, we need to subtract all these whites. We need to subtract from this black, right? And we need to do that all over the place. So I'm going to try to do it all at once. You can see these empty white layers. So it's pretty simple. I'm just going to hold down Shift and Command and select all of them with what they overlap. And then I'm just going to use the Pathfinder tool. Again, you can find that under Window Pathfinder. And I'm just going to exclude or minus one from the other. And figure out 